Hello everyone and welcome to Soul Stained Ink. My name is Beth and um, my daughter had a dentist appointment today and it did not go amazingly. So we went to Barnes & Noble. Um, she has her stuff. She did not want me to include it in a haul because I took her back to her Papa and Gaga so she could go to school tomorrow. But the poor little three-year-old um, was supposed to have multiple things done and she's had an ear infection recently and the noise of the drill or whatever they were doing, like the suction and stuff on the filling that they got done, um, it freaked her out. So they couldn't like proceed to the other stuff. Um, and she was scared and it made me upset. And Pinocchio was playing when we walked in, which is a whole different trauma set for me. Um, so when we got done, we went to the bookstore. I'm not even sure how many books I bought. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but that's fine because they're all for middle grade May because <laughs> I didn't have enough books on my TBR already. Let's get into it. The first one I got is in Ghostly Japan, Japanese Legends of Ghost, Yokai, Yurei, and Other Oddities by Lovecadio Hearn. Um, so there is that. It's a set of legends and myths. Um, I'm just grabbing them out of the bag so they're not in any... Um, any specific order, by the way, and there are stickers on them. Excuse me. Uh, Dust and Grim by Chuck Wendig. I'll get the rest of that sticker off. I just couldn't see his name. I don't even know what this is about. Um, it's super, super cute um, cover. 13-year-old Molly doesn't know how she got the short end of the stick, being raised by her neglectful father, while Dustin, the older brother she's never met, got their mother and the keys to the family estate. Now the siblings are both orphaned. Molly's come home for her inheritance. And if Dustin won't welcome her into the family business, then she'll happily take her half in cash. There's just one problem. The family business is a mortuary for monsters. Ah, oh, there's more to it, but we'll just go on. All right, then we have Solomar, the Sword of the Monarchs by Pam Munoz Ryan. Um, so there's that. Uh, this girl, Solomar, is apparently about to have her quinceanera, and she's going to be the queen. I don't know. Like I said, I have no idea. Oh, socks. I forgot I got socks. I got socks with eyeglasses, because of course I did. And then socks that say right on. Um, then I got from Kelly Lang. It's called New From Here. And it's about 10-year-old Knox Way Evans, who ended up moving countries in two days. A virus named COVID-19 hits Hong Kong, and his mom makes the last-minute decision to move him and his siblings to California because they think they're going to be safe. Um, but Knox's dad had to stay behind to work and his older brother Bowen um, doesn't want to be around him. So that's pretty cool. I loved Front Desk, uh, which is about immigrants who own a hotel and their daughter. It was great. Uh, then I found this. This is Tales of the Samurai by A.B. Mitford. It is really, really pretty. And again, it is legends and stories about uh, the samurai in Japan. Oh, there's more. There's more. Don't worry. Uh, then I got Kiyosh, Kiyosh Monsef's book, Once There Was More. I have no idea. I got nothing. Um, yeah. little girl and now there's griffins in the world um then felice and the wailing woman by diana lopez apparently felice is the 12 year old daughter of la larona the most famous monstro of the u.s mexico border lore she's determined to free her mother who is stuck between worlds and reverse the curses that have plagued the magical magical town of tres leches um so I think this might be the first in a series. I hope it's the first. There's not anything telling me that there's a book before it. So there's that. Then I was super excited because Grave Books is out. This is by J.A. White. 
And Grave Books is the sequel to Night Books. I love Night Books. I've read it a couple of times and I've read it with a group of um, sixth grade boys. We read it uh, during study hall last year. If everybody got their work done, I'd read them another chapter. And so, you know, their teachers would let me know, yeah, no, they're good. They have all their homework turned in. Everybody's passing. And we would read a chapter of Night Books and they loved it. And then we actually watched the movie, which is very, very different. And they did their own compare contrast without my prompting them. And it was so much fun. Uh, so I'm super excited about great books. Next, I have World Mythology and Bite Sized Chunks by Mark Daniels. Uh, this is, like it says, just a bunch of world mythology. So it has um, Australian and Maori, Egyptian, Sumerian. I'm just flipping through Mayan, South and Central American, American Indian, Chinese. Yeah. So I'm excited to read bits out of that. And then I got a treasury of Irish fairy and folk tales, mostly because I don't know why I don't already have this. I thought I had a copy. I don't have a copy. Now I have a copy. That was this bag. We have another bag and also the tiny child had several things that I left with her. So, yeah, we went on a spree. I got some cute pencils. And what's really adorable is I just thought they were pencils and I paid way too much money for them, but they were cute and were traumatized, right? I was like, oh, 10 pencils. Yep, 10 pencils. And it came with this cute little wooden sharpener. And, yeah, a little tin. Very excited about that. I love me some pencils because I do handwrite all of my, um, I didn't get this at Barnes and Noble. I got this at Big Lots, but it is a grow your own mint grow kit. Better not forget about that. Uh, anyway, I handwrite all of my first drafts. We also got squishies. Aww. They were surprise squishies and she really wanted the penguin. So I got a couple of different packages hoping that the penguin was going to be in it. And uh, the very first thing she opened was a penguin. And then the second one was another penguin. So I got to have a penguin. All right, let's see. Let's actually look at the books. I bought a new copy of The Jungle Book. Uh, this is not the edition I wanted. And I know that sounds terrible because this is a gorgeous uh, cloth bound penguin classic. It's beautiful. Um, I wanted the Cambridge, um, this kind. They didn't have any of those at Barnes and Noble. Could not find them anywhere. Um, so yeah, there are five more, five more books to show you. So I haven't had a book haul this big in a long time. And I got a book box in the mail. So as soon as I get done with this, I will be unboxing the unplugged book box so yeah that should be up shortly anyway five more books the someday birds i don't know anything at all about this other than the fact that it's by sally j claw and it it looked pretty let's see it's filled with humor heart and chicken nuggets sold all right then i got the witch the sword and the cursed knights by alexandria rogers I don't even need to read the back. Like, that's just perfection right there. Then, When You Trap a Tiger by Ty Keller. Um, so, Ty Keller wrote The Science of Breakable Things. It was her debut um, middle grade, and it is one of my favorite books of all time. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time to teach it to my seventh graders this year, and I didn't have seventh graders last year. Um, but I've written like a unit for it and I'm super excited to teach it. I think I may actually start the school year with it next year if I have seventh graders because we're not sure if I'm teaching seventh grade again or not because we have to move things around. That's neither here nor there. I know I love her writing. I know she writes very poignantly, very beautifully. And um, I didn't even read the back. I saw that it was by Ty Keller and I said, yes, please. Um, then I got The Ice Monster by David Walliams. And again, I know nothing about it other than the fact that I flipped it over and it said, Ice Monster found in the Arctic. And that's what I needed. 
Um, and also on the bottom, it says um, he is the heir to Roald Dahl, and that's saying a lot about the author. And I was like, okay, cool. All right. And then the last book I got is this one. It is Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. And this is a Newbery Honor book about Min Lee, who lives in the Valley of Fruitless Mountain, where she and her parents spend their days working hard in the fields. And at night, she listens to her father's tales about the old man of the moon who knows the answers to everything. So she sets out on a quest to find the old man of the moon, uh, trying to bring good fortune to her family. Um, so like I said, they're all for middle grade May, and most of them are going to help me in my research when I talk about the movement of cultures and mythology across um, across the world and across middle grade and all that jazz. So um, I don't even know how many I got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 books, two pairs of socks and some pencils for me. And then Ray Ray got, I want to say two books, a coloring book, a thing of Legos, three books, a coloring book, a thing of Legos, a stuffed penguin, and then we got a stuffed Snoopy for my mom, and we got her sister a coloring book. So yeah, like Barnes and Noble loved me today is what I'm saying. All right, that's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you think about them. And of course, The Jungle Book is our uh, classic children's literature book club book pick for the month of May, which is happening right now. So if you want to read along with us, we do have a Goodreads group that will be linked down below, or you can put comments in my videos, um, or I can start a Voxer or Discord page if we would like to chat there as well. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of these. I will talk to you guys again soon. Until then, stay safe. Bye.